Hello, and welcome to this NAV Know How webinar session for Metaphorix. In this session, we're going to be looking at stock take and best practices in Navision 2013. We'll start off the session by going to the item card and having a look at the various fields that we can use when we're doing our stock take to filter our products by to make counting easy. We will also have a look at a field on the warehousing tab called the physical inventory counting period. This field will allow you to code your various products into things, for example, perhaps fast moving items or perhaps items of more value than others and will prompt you when those items should be counted and we'll be looking at the setup for that. We will then go to our physical inventory journal. Um, I'm going to be using the physical inventory journal but of course some of you might have for warehousing and in which case you will be using the warehouse physical inventory journal. I will point out the differences for you as we go through the process. So when we look at our physical inventory journal, we're going to do one option, which will be to create our journal lines for those items that are using the accounting period um, code only. We will then have a look at how uh, we can print our report out. And in this situation, we're going to be printing the uh, calculated quantities, that is the quantities that Navision thinks are in stock. We will then look at how we can update the quantities and how we post the journal. In our part two of the physical inventory journal, we will be looking at items that are components only. Obviously, for those of you that have bill of materials or assembled items, you would want to exclude those items from your physical and inventory journal. We will then, in this case, have a look at the report and this time we will do the report uh, with the calculated quantities. And again, we will go through how we have updated our journal, how we post it, and at that point we can then see that our stock is now at the relevant levels. So let's get started and we'll go to our database as usual. I'm using the Cronus database. First thing we'll do then is we will have a look at our items. So for example, if we just have a look at our item card, I don't intend on going through all of the fields on here, but just highlight some areas that might be useful when you're doing your stock take because obviously if you have a large uh, warehouse uh, it's probably impossible to count all of your stock at one time and in which case we will look at how uh, fields that we could use uh, in filtering the stock that we want to count. So such fields include things like item category codes so you can have an item category code set up for your products here in our Cronus database we have furniture and miscellaneous and I'll show you the items that fall into that category in a moment. Other fields that we might want to use might include uh, things like uh, shelf numbers etc. I have an item here called a tyre and on this particular product, what I want to do, you'll notice it hasn't got an item category code, but that's fine because we can either exclude it from a filter or use it depending on how we want to work. But this time I want to show you how we can set our product up for special counting. So here's the field on the warehouse tab on our item card and it's called Physical Inventory Counting Period. And quite simply, we can attach a code for our particular products. In this database, if I just pop to the advanced screen, 
So we can set up our codes to fit, best fit our stock. In this particular case, we have fast, which is fast movers or high value items. And how many times you want to count that stock per year. So here we have six times a year, so basically every other month. Our normal stock is normal sale or medium value stock and we're going to be counting that twice a year so once every six months and then for our slow stock slow and or low value stock we just want to count it once a year so for this particular item i'm just going to pop that on to uh, normal so we're going to be counting this once uh, every six months and you'll notice that when we say OK and then just click out of that field, we have a little dialog box where it's telling us that if we change the physical inventory counting period, the next counting period is calculated. And what that means is it's going to populate these boxes here. Do we still want to go ahead? So yes, please. So we can see here that we've got our next accounting period. So based on the period that we're in at the moment, so this is on our um, financial year or inventory year, dependent on whether we have one set up or not, it's going to be twice a year. So we're in the second half of this year. So therefore, I'm going to be counting at any time between July and December. You'll notice that this box isn't filled in yet because this will only be populated once we have actually run the um, stock take for that particular product. So I'm going to say OK there. And what I just want to show you now is those products that will fall into those various categories. So if we have a look at that uh, item range that we were just working on, so if I just come down to our physical inventory counting period code and here I can select which ones I want. But just to show you the ones that we have in the database, I'm just going to say is not equal to space. So here we have all of the items that have that period calculation attached to them. The other products that I might want to use when I come to do my physical inventory journal is the fact of the uh, item category code. So again here I'm going to just check whether it's in my list or not. Come down to my item category code. And in this case, I'm just going to show you those that are under the furniture. So we can see here we've got all our desks, etc. So I will use those filters when we come now to do our journals. So moving on to our journals, I'm just going to use my shortcut because we don't always have everything where we want it. So I'm looking at my physical inventory journal here. As I said, if you have full warehousing, then you will be using the warehouse physical inventory journal. The process is the same, but I will explain to you where it changes as we're running through. So, physical inventory journal. Let's just make that a little bit bigger. Okay, and because on this particular run, I'm going to use those items that I have deemed as being either uh, fast, normal or slow moving. So going to our actions ribbon, I can simply use the calculate counting period. And that will give me a list of all the items that are set up with that code enabled on the item card itself. 
and it's pulling up all those that fall into the period that we're in at the moment. So the ones that are being pulled up here are all the ones under our normal uh, counting period and it is showing us that they're all running within the second half of this year. Now at this point in time I can still decide to select as to whether I want to use them all or not and I can do that simply by highlighting, clicking and dragging or using uh, my shift key to do the, as I call it, the cherry pick or if I'm happy to count all of them then I will just select all of my entries just by clicking on that very top square at the top of my list. I then say OK and now it's asking me for some information in terms of what is going to be the posting date. Well realistically uh, depend, well, depending on how many items you are going to be counting, the posting date might not be today's date as it has um, auto-populated for me. If we're doing a, a large warehouse area, then it might be we start the count on the Saturday to then post the journal on the Sunday. So I would change the date to when I'm actually going to be posting that journal. I can say what my document number is going to be. So it might be, um, I might want to call it stop take uh, 2016. I have some other choices here as well is, do I want to include any items that I have an item card for, but as far as Navision is concerned, I don't have in stock. So realistically, you might well wish to tick that box. Okay. And at this point in time, you can also decide that you want to uh, print the journal straight away and whether you want to show that calculated quantity or not. I'm not going to choose that option at the moment because otherwise it will go straight to print and of course I won't be able to show you that report on screen. So I'm not going to uh, tick that box at this moment in time. One more thing that we need to discuss before we go ahead and populate our journal is because it is extremely important prior to running a stock tape, whether it's using the inventory or the warehouse uh, physical inventory journal is the state of our stock on our warehouse floor. I would always recommend that any receipts that you have made that they are put away before you start your stock take. Also if there are any items that as far as sales orders for example are concerned where you have said that you have shipped the goods, that those goods are physically either outside of the building, i.e. sent to the customer, or they are specifically placed in an area so that they won't be counted. Because of course, Navision works on receipts that have been received, shipments that have been made out of the system to then use when it is calculating the stock. So you just need to make sure that any receipts that you have are put away or in an area that you know you can count and that any stock that is physically been shipped as far as the vision is concerned that that stock if it hasn't left the warehouse that again that's in an area so that it won't be counted on the stock take. So once we're happy that all that is in place, we can then just simply say OK. And now Navision is going to go through those stock items and produce the lines on our journal. Now reading across the lines of our journal, we can see that we've got the posting date as we selected when we ran the option. We have everything sitting here as positive adjustment. Don't worry about that for the moment. I will come back to that uh, shortly. We then have our document number as we again entered in our uh, process box. And then we've got our items. 
with their description, any location codes if applicable. And again, this will appear exactly the same as uh, on your warehouse uh, physical inventory journal, albeit you will have uh, bin numbers as well if applicable. We then have our quantity calculated and this is the field that Navision has auto populated for us and that is indeed the figure that Navision thinks it has in stock. We then have our physical inventory and this is the actual quantity that we will be changing when we have completed our stock take. The quantity field here will then represent the difference between the calculated quantity here that Navision has and the physical quantity that you have counted. And again, I will show you how that works. You've then got uh, the various amounts as well in terms of um, the stock values. So, first thing that will happen is that we will send out and again, if it's a physical inventory journal, uh, it's exactly the same. Um, and if you have uh, handhelds for um, doing your stock, then this next process can be sent to uh, the handhelds. But we will show it all on screen here through our print. So I will go to the print. And here we have that opportunity of saying whether we want to show the quantity calculated or not. So I'm not going to show you, uh, show that on this uh, printout at the moment. And also if our items are serial or not lot number registered, then we can choose to have them displayed on the printout as well. So I will just do a preview. And so we can see here that we have our dates, our document number, the item number, description, and you will see here that dependent on whether you're using locations and or bin codes, it would have been split out by those relevant codes. We've chosen not to show the vision's calculated quantity, and we can hear now for um, our users on the shop floor who were going to go out and count, they would come back with that quantity populated for us. So once we have sent this out to the warehouse, they will then come back with the various quantities so that we will then have to update our journal. So I will just close that screen. And now I'm just going to highlight the various differences between positive and negative figures and how they are represented on our journal line. So if you remember, we will be changing the quantity physical inventory field to display the quantity that has physically been counted. So in this case, if I was to make that, perhaps we only have 399 in stock, not the 400 that Navision has specified. The quantity difference is positive, uh, sorry, negative one, but it doesn't display the fact whether it's positive or negative. Where it shows us is in the entry type here on our second column, which has now changed that positive adjustment into a negative adjustment. On our Next line down are little spokes. Well, I would imagine we quite often uh, get those wrong. So in this case, I'm going to make that um, 10,000 and two. So again, we've got that difference between the two columns in our quantity field. And this indeed is showing as a positive adjustment. So if I just change this, perhaps we've had a bit of a fallout on our um, axle front wheels. So I'm changing that to 90 and again it's moved to a negative adjustment. 
Any of those that have stayed the same, I can keep them on the journal. I don't have to remove them because the movement is neither positive or negative, as in it's zero, so nothing will happen to our stock levels. So once I'm happy with this, I can then just simply go to post and post our journal. So I'm just going to make a mental note here of this item number 1110 and say yes. Okay, now that is a bit naughty, isn't it? I went and changed that document number and obviously I have a number series set up. So I need to change that document number to TO2001. So I will dutifully do that. And just using the F8 key populate that through the rest of the journal lines. And those lines are successfully posted. So we'll just quickly pop back to our rim here because I just want to take you through um, looking at uh, the details. So if I go to my navigate ribbon and go to my uh, ledger entries, if I could find them, there they are, under entries, ledger entries. Okay, and we can see not a lot of movement on this particular product. We had a positive adjustment bringing our 400 in and there's my negative adjustment of my uh, document T0 2001 showing that we have reduced the stock and the remaining quantity now on that product is 399. Now the difference with the uh, warehouse physical inventory journal instead of posting you would have done a register So for those of us who are using the uh, Warehouse Fiscal Inventory Journal, once we have registered our journal, we would then come to the uh, Inventory Journal and we would use the uh, Calculate Warehouse Adjustment. I'll just show you where that is. it's called item journal and on our actions we will use the calculate warehouse adjustment our item journal will be populated with what has been posted from the warehouse side and then we will post that in order to update things from the inventory and the costs point of view So if we now look at our second option on our physical inventory journal, because now we'll look at posting or stop doing our stock count for those items that haven't already uh, been counted. So in this case, instead of using the calculate counting period, we'll just use the calculate inventory and that is on the uh, um, home uh, ribbon as well. Again, we need to make sure that our date is the correct date that we're going to use and our document number. And again, we have the choice as to whether we want to include items that are not on inventory as well. Now, because we have counted our um, inventory period counting code stock items, it probably would be an idea, dependent on how many you have, um, to exclude those from this particular run. So I will go to our physical inventory counting period code and I will this time 
the code for not having, not equal to. So I don't only want something um, that has a blank in that field. If I didn't want something, if you remember, we use the left and right hand chevrons. In this case, I want to filter on those that have a blank, i.e. don't have the accounting period. And the other option we looked at when we were looking at the item card was our item category code. So for example, if I just wanted to pull those up, of those furniture ones, I could indeed use that filter there. Now, of course, it might be that the furniture are also blanks anyway, so I wouldn't necessarily have to use that particular filtering, but it's just so that you can see how you can add the various codes. And of course, you can do it by location, if you use locations in your warehouse, and if you've got bins set up, again, you can do it at the bin level. So again, once we've got this information, we just simply say OK, and there's all our items, and I have got my various location codes. So it is, again, just a simple case of coming in and changing our values. Once we have printed our report, and I did say this time that I would do our report where it's showing our values that have been uh, calculated by Navision. So this time, show quantity calculated, I will tick that box and I will do my preview. So here we can see against all our locations the actual quantity as calculated by Navision. So again, we just simply come in here and we change our values to those as per our count. So I found another desk, so we've got a positive adjustment, whereas we have lost some of these desks, changing to our negative amounts, and so on and so forth down our list of inventory. Now, if for any, ever, any reason we don't want to uh, post those other lines, we can, of course, just scroll down, highlighting our lines and delete them. So that, again, I'll just show you this particular item. So we're going to show the increase on here. So I'll post that journal so I'll pop in that item that we just did the stop take on and we'll go and have a look at those ledger entries and we can see our two entries here so there is the positive one that I entered against the green location. And there is the negative four as counted against the location called out log. Now, of course, if you're using the warehouse physical inventory journal, the you would have registered that journal rather than post. And just to recap, you would go to the item journal and in this case you would use the calculate warehouse adjustment that again would populate those lines as posted on the warehouse physical inventory journal and then you would post it from an inventory perspective. So I hope that that has given you a little bit of insight as to how you can run your stock take. And I hope that you have indeed enjoyed this session today. Just to recap, 
we looked at our item cards and we looked at the fields that we could use to use in our filtering on our physical inventory journal or warehouse inventory journal. We've also looked at how we could use the physical inventory counting period code to ask Navision to automatically uh, inform us as to when certain stock items should be counted. We ran our physical inventory journal twice, once just filtering on those items that were deemed as being either uh, fast, normal or slow moving items. And we produced our report. Again, that could have gone to handhelds, uh, which in the first instance we showed without showing the calculated quantities. And then we updated our journal lines by changing the uh, quantity physical column to the actual number as counted by the warehouse people. And we posted the journal. We then had a look at how we could run the uh, stock take again, but this time for components only, or in our case, we used just those with the item category code of furniture. And on that run, we showed it with the report being uh, produced with the calculated quantities again, or which could have gone through to handhelds if you have those on your system. And then we looked again at how to update those quantities and post the journal. So thank you for joining us today. As normal, you can get a recording of this and all previous webinars on the Metaphorix website shown on your screen. If you have any queries or questions, please either email Debbie or support at the addresses on your screen. Of course, metaphorics.co.uk on that last line. Thank you again for joining us and I hope that we will meet up again soon for our next webinar. Goodbye.